Hello everybody and welcome to the scariest place on earth, also known as my YouTube channel. A few weeks ago, Disney released a trailer for their new Haunted Mansion movie. It looks pretty good. The Haunted Mansion is my favorite ride at Disney World, so obviously I'm going to go check it out. I'm going to go watch it. It looks very interesting to me. But that also reminded me, there's another Haunted Mansion movie they made a long time ago, starring Hollywood's favorite comedian at the time, Eddie Murphy. Everybody knows Eddie Murphy. He's in classic movies like Shrek, Dr. Doolittle, Norbit. Remember Norbit? If you don't remember Norbit, it's probably a good thing. You don't want to know Norbit. But it had me thinking, how bad is this movie? I remember everybody talking bad about it for so long. I never really watched it. I just watched it uh, for the first time like a year or two ago. I didn't pay much attention to it, honestly. But <laughs> from what I remember, it wasn't that bad. So I want to see what makes it so bad. Is it the bad acting? Is it bad dialogue? Is it just a bad movie overall? So let's watch it today and let's see what makes it so terrible. Movie starts off giving us a little backstory to the mansion. It tells us this by giving us flashbacks and showing us tarot cards to go with the flashbacks. But we see the mansion and we see the owner, Master Gracie. He's having a, a masquerade ball in the mansion. And while the ball is going on, his lover Elizabeth is upstairs writing him a letter. And uh, you can pause and read the letter if you want to. I read it. It isn't, it, nothing important is in the letter, I guess, to save for later on in the movie. She finishes her letter, puts it in an envelope, and slides it underneath Master Gracie's door. Master Gracie goes to his room to see the letter, and apparently it's something that is not good. He looks at it in shock, drops drops the letter and runs away. In the time Master Gracie saw the letter, Elizabeth had drank poison. Now, in this point in the movie, we don't know if she drank it to kill herself or if somebody poisoned her, but we'll find out soon if you keep watching. This obviously ruins the vibe of the party. He carries her dead body upstairs, and then right after that, he hangs himself. Pretty grim start to a kid's movie, if you ask me. Next, we see a kid delivering mail on a bicycle. He rolls up to the mansion to give them a flyer for Evers and Evers real estate, when uh, a ghost face scares the shit out of him, and he drops them all and runs away. This is when we zoom in and meet our main character, Jim, also played by Eddie Murphy. Jim Evers works in real estate. He's a workaholic. He works all the time. He even misses him and his wife's anniversary because he's trying to sell a house. So that tells you what kind of person he is. He makes it home to a very angry wife, understandably, and he brings her a teddy bear and a watch, like a really nice expensive watch to apologize for missing the dinner for their anniversary. And she's not really buying it. She's still very upset because he's just so busy at work that he's missed three soccer games, two birthday parties and barbecue you missed. Did I miss that much stuff this month? So he promises to take the weekend off. Him and their family are going to go to a lake and just enjoy time together. Spend time together. No work at all. And that's when we get to meet the kids. So the first kid we meet is Michael. Michael is a, a little boy, so he's scared of bugs still. Still scared of a lot of things in life. Also, Jim says Michael Jordan Evers. So his middle name is Jordan. This nerd of a man named his son Michael Jordan. He's going to have to live with that name for the rest of his life. Anyways, he gets upstairs to help his son kill this spider that's on the window. And he's giving him like a... a, a speech that you have to be a big boy you know spiders and bugs aren't that scary you just gotta kill it and he starts instructing him on how to kill the spider and he sees a bunch of magazines he's like oh just grab one of these magazines picks it up finds out michael has been stealing his dirty magazines <laughs> it's not like actual porn though it's sports illustrated swimsuit because that's like the closest you can get before you know you reach porn, but he says, if you're old enough to look at this, you're old enough to kill spiders. So that's a good parenting moment, I guess. I don't know. But after that, he's still too scared to kill the spider, but his sister Megan is not. Hey. Now, Megan is um, a typical 13 year old. She's just sassy and mad at her parents all the time for no reason. That's all, that's all I'm going to say about that. After we meet the kids, we cut back to Sarah uh, and she's on the phone with a potential customer who wants to sell their house. The customer tells her that it's an old house and that if they want to sell it, that she needs to come alone. They don't think Jim has a trustworthy face. And she's like, oh, well, me and my husband are a team. We don't really do this without each other. And he was like, oh, it's a shame. Well, you really need to come this weekend. But this weekend is the big lake trip and she knows this. So she's like, oh no, me and my family are gonna be out. And right when she says that, Jim comes downstairs. He's like, oh, wait, 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 what are you on the phone with? Oh, I'm on the phone with a potential customer. They're trying to sell us a house in this street. And then Jim's like, all, all, all the houses down there are like big, big multi-million dollar mansions. This could be huge. We can we can take it. We can take this. And she's like, no. And then he pretty much is like, yeah, we, we got it. So on their way to the lake trip, they're going to stop by this mansion, just check it out, talk to the owners and see if they can possibly help them sell the house. But that doesn't go according to plan. If it did, we wouldn't have a movie. So and Jim is so much of a workaholic that even on the way to check out the mansion that they're already stopping their little family trip for to go look at, he gets a call from another customer. And he's like, oh, I can't. We're my family's going to be gone this weekend unless we can come home early. And he looks at his wife and she's like, 
No, I, I can't come back early. Does not approve. So even while he's making a detour, he's going to try to detour his detour to go look at it. He is very much a workaholic, very much um, chasing the bag, if you will. They pull up to the mansion and they see that the gate is locked, like chained, locked, deadbolt locked. So Sarah gives up pretty easily. She's like, it's getting late and we should make it to the lake. So let's just go ahead and go home. When they turn around and start walking back to the car, the gate magically opens kind of weird. Makes me think there's something not right about this house. I don't know about you guys. That's a little weird though. But after the gate opens, you know, they're already here. Might as well go check out the inside. They all get out of the car and walk into the backyard just to check out the backyard before they go inside. And they see a, a large cemetery. Makes me think there's something not right about this house. But the kids are um, obviously creeped out about this. They're like, that's not normal. People don't just have cemeteries in their backyard. And Jim is on their side for a second until Sarah's like, no, it's normal. Some people have pools. Some people have private cemeteries. But this is a large cemetery. This is no like you know, a few graves, you know, just like the family. This is like an actual like World War II cemetery. Like it is huge, but obviously they're real estate workers. They're really good at selling houses. So they're just gonna um lie and say it's spacious grounds. This historical sprawling manor with spacious grounds, yes. Hey, that's good. We'll put that on the listing. And leave out all the dead people? And this is the beautiful, luscious backyard with beautiful lawn ornaments just covering the whole land. I mean, look at this place. Isn't it just gorgeous? Yeah. Um. This is just a cemetery. What, uh, what? No, a cemetery? I wouldn't, I wouldn't sell anyone a cemetery. No, the, the owner of the house previously told me he, he put these here because they, they reminded him of special times and special things, so he dug these giant stones into the ground. And I just think they're beautiful. Just look at them. They're, they're just gorgeous. You, you mean the gravestones? Oh, no, no, they're not gravestones. They're just decora- but That, that decoration says Smith on it. Wait, does it really? Oh yes, the the owner signed all of his uh, all his artwork. Uh, his last name was actually Smith, so yeah, that's why that says Smith on it. And there's literally a zombie coming out of that one. Oh, oh, that guy. Yeah, he's just the groundskeeper. He he sleeps in the dirt for some reason, but he comes out every night and he's, he's he keeps saying like brains. It's kind of weird. I don't I don't understand why he does it, but uh, he just watches over the place and he eats all the the wild animals that come through here for some reason? No, dude, this is definitely his dead relatives. W wait, how do you know if there's dead people in here? <laughs> ah! But while they're checking out the cemetery, it starts raining, so uh, they have to go inside. They knock at the front door, and the front door opens on its own. Makes me think there's something not right about this house. But they walk inside, and it's a big, beautiful home. Just one small problem. Uh, there's cobwebs everywhere and it's dusty and it looks like nobody has lived in it for a very long time. And even worse, it has spiders. But Jim tells them that they're going to get cleaners out. They're going to clean up the place. It'll look really nice and pretty and it'll sell almost instantly. And as he is talking about how great and wonderful the house would be clean, we get to meet the butler Ramsley. Something makes me feel like Ramsley isn't that nice. He comes in and only greets Sarah because she's the only one he invited. Still very rude of him to just do that. And Jim introduces himself. Ramsley gives him the cold shoulder again. But Jim wins his heart over with a waterproof calendar. Just like every other real estate agent, I guess. Ramsley guides them to the dining room. They're going to have dinner with the owner of the house. The kids and Sarah mention that it's getting late and they really need to make it to the lake so they can have their big family adventure. But Jim is like, we can't be rude. We'll sit down. We'll have some soup. We'll talk to them for a little bit and then we'll go home or then we'll go to the lake. And they also get to walk down the hallway full of uh, the armor suits, which is really cool to me. I, I like it. I think they look awesome. We then get to meet Master Gracie. Master Gracie is the owner of the house. He's a very handsome, very kind man. They all sit down and have dinner and talk to Master Gracie. And Sarah is talking about how beautiful the house is, how she really loves it. And Master Gracie is um, getting a little bit too uh, flirtatious for uh, mine and Jim's liking. All is going well until Master Gracie asks a very important question. Tell me, Mr. Ellis, do you believe in ghosts? And Jim gives a very Jim answer. Ghosts? Sure, I believe in ghosts. I don't think it's a good idea to put that information on the listing, though. We should talk about how many bathrooms are in the house. We cut to Ramsley. Ramsley lets them know that the river has flooded. Pretty much, um, they're stuck in the house for at least the night because of the storm. So their lake trip is delayed by a day now. But luckily, they're in a mansion, so they all get their own rooms in this giant nice mansion for the night. Whenever Jim and Sarah get into their room, they immediately start fighting because they're supposed to be at the lake right now. Not in some old-ass, scary-ass mansion with scary-ass Ramsley following them around and watching them everywhere they go. 
But after their small fight, Ramsley shows up again, but he lets Jim know that Master Gracie wants to talk to him in his office. So Ramsley walks Jim down to Master Gracie's office. And while they're walking down there and when they get there, they have a, a little bit of small talk, you know, just getting the story going. We learn that Master Ramsley is kind of stuck in this house and he really needs to move on. He's stuck there because something that happened a long time ago and he just can't get over it. But if he moves on, then he'll be free from the house. Very mysterious, very ominous. And Jim kind of just brushes it off his shoulder like, yeah, we'll help him sell the house. <laughs> After Ramsley leaves, Jim starts up. Uh, snooping around the office, even stealing matches and a cigar. That's just great, you know. Burglary is great, you know. But upon his snooping, he actually found a uh, secret passageway by knocking over a head of a bust on the desk. And he's already snooping this much. Might as well just walk in the door, right? But before we can see where the secret passage leads to, we gotta go check up on the kids. And just like his dad, Michael is snooping around in the room. He opens up this jewelry box that has a, uh, what looks like Master Gracie and Elizabeth dancing. It's like one of those um, ballerina jewelry box things. As he's looking at that, he spots something behind him. It's a big giant blue ball. In technical terms, it's an orb. It's a ghost orb. Michael is reasonably uh, terrified right now, but Megan doesn't seem scared at all. She's got like nerves of steel. She's like more manly than I would be, honestly. I would pee my pants right there on the spot. But she notices that the orb wants them to follow it. The orb wants to lead them somewhere important. Obviously, Michael is too scared to follow it, but when Megan leaves him in the room alone, he decides maybe it's not the worst option. We then cut to Sarah. She's looking for Jim right now. She's wandering the hallways, but she can't seem to find him. But she does find one of the maids. She asks the maid if she's seen Jim anywhere, and the maid has a, a very weird response. Their response is she turns around and runs away. But after she turns the corner of the hallway, she magically disappears. Hmm makes me think something's not right about this house. Never mind the ghost orb the kids just saw in the last scene. While she's still looking for the maid, uh, Ramsley does another creepy teleportation trick on her. She asks Ramsley if she's seen Jim, and he lies to her and points her to the direction of the library, not his office. She walks inside, doesn't find Jim, but finds Master Gracie sitting in the chair. While her and Master Gracie are alone, she decides to go ahead and ask him some questions about the house. Mainly, why do you want to sell the house? And he lets her know that uh, it's too painful to live there. There's so many things have happened that he just can't bear the pain of living in the walls anymore. And then he takes her on a little trip throughout the house. He talks about how the mansion used to be really lively. It used to have a lot of parties, a lot of people hanging out. It was very fun to be around. That is until Elizabeth died. And that's why the house is so grim and dark now. But before we can hear anything else about Elizabeth, we cut back to the kids following the ghost orb. The orb leads them to the attic to a wedding dress and a chest and also a painting of Elizabeth. But the weird part about Elizabeth is she looks exactly like Sarah. I know, I know I keep saying in the next scene, but this is just now setting up the story for the rest of the movie. So a lot of stuff is happening right now. So try to keep up. I'm sorry. We cut back to Jim. He's actually coming out of a painting. The secret passageway led to the back of a painting, but he comes outside and it's a bunch of Easter eggs and homages to the, the original ride in Disney World and Disneyland. We get to see the changing paintings. We get to see the busts that follow him. We even get to see the purple wallpaper, the classic wallpaper. But at the end of the hallway is a breathing door or as Jim says big ass turn lights, that's all. when he finally opens the door there's nothing back there besides a phone and a mirror and the phone is ringing when he answers it no one's there he then turns to the mirror and sees a decayed face his own decayed face, that is. We then come back to the kids. They're still in the attic. And this is when we get to meet Ezra and Emma. Now, Ezra is also the name of one of the hitchhiking ghosts. If you don't know about the hitchhiking ghosts, they're just these ghosts at the end of the ride that, uh, you know, they hitchhike. They, they want to catch a ride with you so they can leave the house. But this is not the same Ezra, just so you know. That Ezra is actually in the movie later on, which is crazy to me. So we get to meet Ezra and Emma, and they're both pretty nice. Ezra wants the kids to get out of the attic before they get into any trouble. And Emma is like, well, we need to help them. They're, they're caught up in all this too. And Emma gives them a cookie, and then they hear somebody come up the stairs. The kids quickly hide, and the mysterious figure is Ezra. Not Ezra, what the fuck? Is Ramsley. Now, Ramsley is asking where the kids are. Are. They're not in their room. They must be somewhere in the mansion. And they're like, oh, I don't know where the kids are. You, you, why are you asking me? We then learn that Ramsley is very upset because she didn't come alone, her being Sarah. And she brought her dumb husband with her. Turns out Ramsley really does not like Jim at all. Listen. Along with that brainless husband of hers, if I had to listen to another word from that insufferable fool, I think I would have burst. 
really, really goes in on Jim. But despite the whole family being there, they're still going to go on with the plan. What is the plan, you may ask? We don't know yet. Wait, we got to keep watching the movie. But the plan is still in full motion and nothing is going to stop them from getting it done. And we cut back to Jim once again. This time we get to meet a fan favorite character, Madame Leota. So Jim walks into the room with Madame Leota. She's reciting the classic, um, what is that, chant? The classic spell? She's reciting the classic chant spell i don't know what to call it she's re reciting the classic thing in the ride when he asks for her help he asks her to help him find a way out and she says to find the way out you must look within and he's like i don't want to look within i want to look without she lets him know that there's an evil spirit in the house and we need to find out who it is he needs to save his family in order to escape and while all this is happening there's trumpets and drums and all kinds of shit flying around him he's like in the air floating spinning around the table really a really cool scene honestly i really like the scene it's the one that i always remember when when I'm thinking of this movie. Like I can remember this as a kid. I remember seeing this scene and I remember nothing else from the movie. This is a little side note, but I still think it's quite interesting. I saw a tweet the other day that was like, it never occurred to me that the only reason why you see the ghosts at the end of the Haunted Mansion ride and the end or after this scene in the movie is because of Madame Leota's little chant. She casts a spell on us and lets us see the ghosts. Without that spell, we wouldn't be able to see it, which makes perfect fucking sense, but I never thought about that. But that's really cool, and now you know that. If I can find the tweet, I'll show it, but if I can't, it's not gonna be there. Just believe me, I promise you, I read it. <laughs> and reasonably freaked out, Jim runs out of the room screaming and being chased by musical instruments. And this continues for uh, quite a long time, probably like a minute and a half to two minutes before he finally escapes the instruments by just closing a door and letting them hit the door. That door just so happened to be the door to the attic, and he finds his son and daughter standing at the top of the staircase with Ezra and Emma. And this is when they inform him of the curse of the house and why they can't leave yet. I also forgot to mention this. Um, they call Madame Leota a word that isn't um appropriate anymore. I'm gonna be calling her Madame Leota because that's her name, but throughout this whole movie, if you decide to go watch this movie, it is um a slur now that they call her throughout the whole movie. So um just be aware of that before you watch it. We cut back to Sarah and Master Gracie talking about Elizabeth. He tells her that it was his grandfather's true love. He really loved her and she killed herself in the house. Sarah asks, how did she die? And he says, she killed herself with poison. They were from two different worlds and they couldn't be. Now, they don't explain why they weren't supposed to be together, but this was a long time ago. Elizabeth was black, so... That's probably the main reason. They don't explain it, but I'm guessing they wanted us to put those two together. Also, they could have just mentioned it at some point. But he also tells her that after she died, his grandfather couldn't live on without her. So he killed himself in the house too. And that's why the house is so dark and gloomy and apparently haunted. A sick transition out of Madame Leota's crystal ball. Then the movie drops a bomb on us. Master Gracie is dead. He was telling the story in third person or telling the story as if it was his grandfather, but it was actually him. He is the one that hung himself in the house. Elizabeth was his lover. You get the, you get the, yeah. And this obviously makes Jim upset. A dead man is trying to steal his wife from him and then kill her so they can be together forever. But most importantly, the house isn't for sale. That's so upsetting. The house isn't for sale. Emma asks Madame Leota if it's true that Elizabeth is now back in the house. So she says that Elizabeth walks these halls, but things aren't as they seem. Very ominous. She didn't say yes or no to Sarah being Elizabeth. She just said, yes, she roams the hall. And from what I can tell, there's a lot of spooky ghosty boys in this house. She could be anywhere, honestly. Then Jim is like, what do you mean by that? And then she gives them a little mission. They have to go find this key that's in the graveyard in a tomb and bring it back to her so that she can tell them what it unlocks. So now they go on a little trip to the graveyard. And just like the earlier scene, the graveyard scene is an homage to the part in the ride. You know, it's a bunch of little Easter eggs. All the people that are running around are like the same ones that are in the ride. Except for one, it is the graveyard keeper and his dog. In this movie, they're dead. In the ride, they're alive. That's me being a nerd. By the way, that's me being like a Disney adult, just knowing that, honestly. But it's true. I saw that and I was like, he's supposed to be alive. Why is he in the graveyard? But also in this part of the ride, we get to meet the hitchhiking ghosts. And this one right here is Ezra. Just so you know, I mentioned it and I figured I thought I should let you guys know which one I was talking about. Here it is. On the search for the tomb with the key in it, they meet the singing busts, the singing heads that um don't help at all, really. <laughs> they just sing random songs whenever he mentions something, so. But they're pretty funny, right? Funny haha. -ha. Funny, funny singing bust heads. Funny boys, yes. Jim and the kids, they find the tomb that the key is in. But 
Michael is too scared to go inside. Of course he is. So Jim tells Megan to stay outside with Michael because, you know, he's too scared to go inside. They're in a creepy graveyard. Just stay right there. I'm going to go grab the key and I'll be right back. Jim makes his way down the stairs into the crypt. When he gets down there, he forgets which grave she said the key would be in. But luckily, we get a nice little jump scare. Turns out Megan um, didn't listen to her father and came down anyways, but she has valuable information. She reminds him that Madame Leota said that it's in a black crypt with no name. And I wonder which one that would be. There's hundreds of graves in this. I, and it can't be that easy to find. Oh. It's the one in the middle of the whole thing. The no-named crypt. The one nobody knows who died. They don't know the name of the person in there. But it's the most important one in the crypt. Pretty crazy. Yeah. I agree. So they open up the crypt and they snatch the key from the dead man's hand, literally. And um, he doesn't appreciate that. So he lifts up from the crypt and um, obviously this scares Jim so bad he drops the key into water and then sends his daughter Megan down to go get the key while he distracts the zombie. And Jim responds by, um, he just tries to, you know, rationalize with the zombie, the brain dead zombie man. He's like, listen, man, I just, I'm just trying to help my wife. Could you just lend me the key for a little bit? But when that doesn't work, he decides it's a smart idea. Let's just knock his head off his shoulders. Pretty smart idea, if you ask me. Um, the only thing is, um, his friends don't appreciate that that much. So while Megan is looking for the key underwater, Jim is fighting off, um, a good 40 or 50 zombies that are chasing after him. Then they make their way down and start attacking Megan too. Luckily, she finds the key and Jim saves her and they run upstairs very fast. The only issue is when they get upstairs, um, the door locks, but... Michael is outside. So you know what? Michael, just open the door. Unlock and open the door for him. Oh, but it can't be that easy, can it? No, no, no. A bunch of spiders, hundreds of spiders just start crawling over the door. Because why not? Where did the spiders come from? I don't know. How they get there? I don't know. Don't ask me these questions. They're just there and we have to deal with it. But Jim gives Michael a, a nice little speech about it's okay to be scared sometimes, but sometimes you have to overcome your fears, which is pretty much what he's been trying to tell him this whole movie, but in a nicer way, in a more understanding way than be a man. So good job, Jim, for um, being a man and telling your son the correct way. And so Michael overcomes this fear, opens the door and lets them free. They bring the key to Madame Leota. Jim shows her the key and says, I got the key. Now where's the door to get out of here? It's like, that's not the key to a door. It's to a trunk. And he's like, a trunk? What trunk? This is supposed to get be the key to the door, the, the key out of here. She's like, yes, this is the key to the way out of here, but it's in a trunk. So they grab Madame Leota and they take her up to the attic. The key goes to the chest in the attic that has all of Elizabeth's stuff in it, including a letter she wrote before she died. So it turns out that Master Gracie proposed to Elizabeth and this is her letter saying, saying yes to his proposal. So it turns out that um she didn't commit suicide. She was killed. But by who? Somebody gave him the wrong letter. Yes, well done, Mr. Evers. I must say I am impressed. I told you Ramsley is creepy. I told you there's something wrong with him. There's always something wrong with the old creepy butler. Besides Alfred, Alfred does not make that list. So Ramsley killed her. He's the one that poisoned her drink. And he gives this evil monologue about why he did it. Master Gracie was prepared to throw everything away, give the house away, just so he could be with Elizabeth. That's how much he loved her. Ramsley's greed would not let that happen. Now, he tries to let it sound like rational, like the house would have been torn down. Everything would have been ruined if he would have married her. But in him killing her, it ended up the same way. But now Ramsley and Master Gracie believe that Sarah is the reincarnation of Elizabeth. They're going to force Sarah to marry Master Gracie so that the curse can be broken. But an alive woman can't marry a dead man. And there's a simple way to fix that. So he's threatening to kill Sarah to her husband. What does he expect her husband going to do? Is he just going to stand there like, oh, yeah, okay. Good idea. Jim obviously gets mad and loses a fight to Ramsley because Ramsley's a ghost and he cannot touch him. And Jim gets thrown out the window. Also, the kids get locked in a trunk. After Jim gets thrown out the window, all the window shades close and all the doors lock. So he can't get inside to save Sarah. But we then cut to Sarah. She's still with Master Gracie and he's still telling her stories about the house and she's following him around and they're in the big ballroom. And this is when Master Gracie goes a little crazy. He asks Sarah if she remembers anything that happened. He's like, I thought bringing you back to the mansion, bringing you back here would help you remember. She's like, remember what? What are you talking about? And he's like, us. 
Remember our love. You remember this house. Remember everything that happened beforehand. And she's like, I don't know what you're talking about. And rightfully runs away from him because he's going crazy. And this is when he starts doing the uh, the teleportation trick that Ramsley was doing this whole movie. Just scaring her even more. And then also scaring her into marrying him. And I kind of skipped over this part, but this is a really cool scene that shows the the dancing ballroom scene from the ride. All the, all the ghosts start appearing around her. Which this is also the first time that Sarah is seeing ghosts throughout this whole movie. Which is like almost at the end which is crazy as she's running away from master gracie she runs into ramsley again she asks him to please talk some sense into him he's going crazy now and ramsley drops the bomb that um you're going to marry him tonight whether you like it or not and then shows her her kids that are locked inside the trunk forcing her to marry master gracie jim breaks off a piece of the metal fence and starts trying to beat one of the windows in to get inside but every time he hits it it just repairs itself almost immediately it gives me like monster house vibes like you know remember the old movie monster house let me know if you want to hear me talk about that I forgot about that movie until just now, but he just can't get inside. So he gives up. Wait a minute. I just thought about this. Why is Ramsley now okay with Master Gracie marrying Elizabeth or right now, Sarah? He wasn't okay with it back then. Why is he okay with it now? I guess it's because he thinks that it'll set their souls free, but she's not Elizabeth. So he would just be killing another woman, just murdering another woman for no reason. There's a little bit of a flaw in his plan. Don't you see? <laughs> Ramsley tells Ezra and Emma to get her ready, put her in the wedding dress and to meet them back in the ballroom. And then we get a little scene of her in the dress. You know, she's crying because she doesn't want to get married, but Ramsley lies to Master Gracie and tells him that she's crying because she's just so happy she's getting married to him. This is when we cut back to Jim and somehow Madame Leota made it outside. I don't know how she got there, but she gives him some words of advice and um, helps him get back inside. See, Jim forgot he has a very useful tool in his hands. A car. He just drives the car through the window. It's that simple, really. <laughs> this is also the same car that he was getting onto Megan for slamming the door too hard in earlier in the movie. So he has had some character development. He's now putting family over money, which is great. So Jim makes it inside, but before he can help his wife, he needs to help his kids. You know, they're locked inside of a trunk. So they are a little bit of a priority right now. He finds his kids still in the trunk, chained up, hanging from the ceiling in the hallway with the armor sets. And when he sees them, he obviously starts running towards them, but not before the armor sets come to life and try to kill him first. But this is when Jim unlocks his Sharingan and just dodges everything and makes them hit each other and like kill and knock each other down. So really cool scene, actually. I actually really like this scene. That's It's probably my favorite scene in the movie. While all this fighting is happening, Ramsley is ordaining Master Gracie and Sarah right now. But before she can drink from the goblet of wine, poisoned wine, Jim busts in the room with the letter. Now this pisses off Ramsley and Master Gracie. Master Gracie literally almost chops off Jim's head with a sword, but that's before he's like, I think you should read this letter. He starts getting a little suspicious of his butler and his long lasting friend, Ramsley. So Ramsley has brainwashed Master Gracie into believing that Sarah is Elizabeth to the point where he even calls Sarah Elizabeth while they're having their little standoff. That's when Sarah's like, I'm not Elizabeth. I'm not this girl you think I am. Ramsley, of course, is like, that's absurd. She must be Elizabeth. He reads the letter and asks Ramsley, what is the meaning of this? It's in her handwriting. So obviously she wrote this. And Ramsley's like, don't listen to this lunatic. Obviously he's not on our side. And Master Gracie's just not buying it. And that's when Ramsley just lets him know that his marriage was not acceptable. He was more worried about the mansion, you know, his job, his life. Master Gracie was going to run away with her so that they could be together. So obviously he gets upset and damns everyone to hell. And that's when all the spirits bust through the windows and the doors and they start swirling around people. And that's when none other than Ramsley gets dragged to hell by a cool ass fire dragon demon thing. It's so cool. But he's not going to hell alone. No, he grabs Jim. Jim's going to go down there with him. But Jim has the grip strength of a fucking gorilla and holds onto the ledge with one hand for so long, even with like a demon pulling him down, which is like crazy. But he gets saved by Master Gracie. Well, after Master Gracie grabs Jim's hand, Ramsley just lets go of him for some reason. I don't know why he didn't just hang on for a little bit longer, but he just lets go and down to hell he is where he belongs, honestly. After Jim is saved, he turns around to see Sarah is passed out on the floor. Turns out that she did have a little bit of the poison, so now she is dead dying or dead or just knocked out and as jim is telling sarah how much he loves her the ghost orb from early in the movie drops down from the ceiling and enters sarah's body turns out the ghost orb was the spirit of elizabeth she had been in the halls in the house this whole time she was just waiting for the correct person to i guess possess in order to tell uh, master gracie about their love but after she enters sarah's body the 
roof opens up to heaven. It's like clouds. It looks really cool. She then lifts up in the sky and like an angel or a fucking crucifix pose, like her arms stretched out, you know, she lets them know that it is Elizabeth, not Sarah. So now Elizabeth is free. All the only thing she needed to be free is the truth to be known. And luckily, Jim let that be known. So Jim actually saved Elizabeth's life. And when she tells him that he's like, it's nothing. It's nothing really. It's, don't even mention it. You don't even have to mention it for real. Like I didn't really do much. I just survived zombies, and you know, I, I just you know got tortured for about twelve hours. But you know, it's really nothing, honestly. It's really, it's, it's. I'm kind of a hero, you know. I'm kind of, kind of the greatest person alive, if you really think about it. <laughs> Hello. I know I look a little bit different. This is a few days after I recorded that. For some reason, I'm an idiot and stopped recording. Don't know why. And I, I completely just stopped talking about the end of the movie. The most important part, actually. So, um, yeah, let's get back into it. Also, I'm recording a skit. So my studio lights are in a different room. I don't feel like cooking them up in here just to move them back in there. So the lighting's bad, I know. Sarah comes down in her crucifixion pose. Starts, um... Making out with Master Gracie right in front of Jim and the kids. Mind you, she's still in Sarah's body. So um, Jim is just watching his wife make out with this dude that he met a few hours ago. And the kids are visibly uncomfortable and he's visibly uncomfortable. But he tries to, you know, like, like, well, that's not actually Sarah. It's Elizabeth. And the kids are like, really? Kids aren't buying it. So he uh, taps <laughs> Master Gracie on the shoulder and is like, uh, that's my my wife you're making out with. <laughs> it's actually a pretty funny scene. Elizabeth looks over at Jim and Jim calls her Sarah. And then this just like, I guess, exercises Elizabeth's soul out of Sarah's body because she turns back into Sarah. But now that everything is known, the curse is lifted and everybody can go to heaven now. All the ghosts in the haunted mansion. And this leads to a, a really sweet scene with Ezra and Emma where they're saying goodbye to the family and thanking them for everything that they've done. And it's just really sweet. I liked Ezra and Emma. They, they added a nice little touch to the movie. And uh, I think they made the movie a little bit better. They didn't really do much. Much, but I liked them. I, I'm not mad that they were in the movie. Then we get a nice little scene of Master Gracie giving Jim and the family the deed to the house. And he tells them that they can sell it or they can move in. They can do whatever they want to. The house is theirs now, which is a oh, huge stroke of luck. If you think about it, they just got like a seven, eight million dollar mansion, Victorian mansion in New Orleans. And I'd imagine they move in, but they probably are a little traumatized by the house. So they're probably going to sell it. I would imagine they'd sell it and, you know, make a lot of profit off of it. Like a, a, a nice two or three million plus dollar profit off the house. <laughs> then Master Gracie goes up to heaven and the family decide to go ahead and go on their little lake road trip thing, but not without bringing some friends along. Yeah, they stole Madame Leota from the house, which I guess they own Madame Leota now, now that I think about it. And they also took the uh, the singing busts because why not? They're strapped to the roof of the car and that's how the movie ends. Now I'm gonna give it back to the idiot that didn't press record. But yeah, that was the Haunted Mansion. I personally like this movie. I think it's a fine movie. <laughs> I don't see all the hate. I do understand there are some really, really crazy Disney fans out there and especially like Disney adults and stuff like that. And I can see why people will get mad that they kind of dropped the whole story to make a new one. But I don't think the story's bad, honestly. I I might get a lot of hate for saying that. It's kind of a, probably a, a hot take, but I like the movie. It's enjoyable to watch. I sat here, I've watched it three times now, three or four times now, you know, just looking at stuff, trying to understand the story a little bit better. And it hasn't gotten boring to me, so it must be doing something right. But yeah, on a scale of one to 10, I give it like a seven or eight, a little higher on my list than normal. It's not too terrible. I really think the Rotten Tomato score is um a little harsh for the movie. The acting's not too bad. There are some parts in the movie where the dialogue seems a little fake where the dialogue feels a little off. I had, like I said, I had a good time watching it. Let me know what you think about the Honda Mansion in the comments below. Thank you for watching the video all the way through. Like the video if you like the video. Hit the subscribe button if you really want to. I'll be back hopefully soon with a new video. Let me know what you want to see in the comments below. I love you all and peace.